Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thanks for being here today. Um, I really hope that you're doing okay uh, coping with this uh, unfolding situation around the world, how you're all doing, hopefully in your own homes. And I wanna to talk to you today about that, how we, during this time of COVID, now we're reaching the year anniversary and well, as I'm recording this, and you know, it's, it's just another, potentially another whole year of this kind of new environment. And we've learned to cope. We are strong. Women in their 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s are, you know, been through things and we are ready to, um, you know, be tenacious and resilient. It gets a little tiring. I know everyone is feeling a bit exhausted, but your home has become your safe place, not just because that's what you've been asked to do by a lot of your governments and, and, and states, but because it's um, a place where we have manifest this changing person that we have become during this time. You know, COVID has really um, shone a spotlight on uh, what, you know, getting us to assess what's really important to us, what's, what our values are, what those things are that we want to surround ourselves with. And I think it's a really wonderful opportunity um, it may never come again in our lives, so let's take advantage of it right now to reshape our physical world. That's our style, the way that we dress, the way that we de uh, decorate our homes and make them truly ours. Now, we have a blogger, her name is Rita Wilkins, and Rita wrote this article on make yourself feel at home in your own home. So you don't need to go somewhere else. You don't need to travel. You don't need to explore anywhere else but your own room, your own living room. Now, I live in one room. I live in a studio. So for me, it's kind of easy that I, I'm seeing everything every day. So I'm finding ways to eliminate du duplicates, uh, you know, find things that are truly speaking to me. Like right now, I'm surrounded by, I have a bunch of tulips in one place. I have another white tulips on my desk. And then I have flowers behind me. I just love flowers. So for me, that's become nature. Bringing it inside has been a really, really important thing. So, um, COVID in general has, uh, you know, encouraged us, it's, it's actually forced us to think about new ways to learn, to play, to communicate with each other. And um, we are living alone, but together, you know, sheltering in place. And that's what I want to talk to you about, how you can make yourself at home, what you can do in your home environment. So what was different? What's changed in your life uh, since the virus hit in, you know, a year ago in March? So we've prepared home cooked meals together. You know, I've, I've learned how to make scones, <laughs> all the high calorie things, um, you know, enjoyed maybe conversations around the kitchen table with people that, you know, were maybe out at work or just not, you know, not doing um, things in the home as much. And that's a kind of mixed blessing. I've read several articles about, you know, people whose marriages and relationships did not survive that, um, you know, that kind of closeness and that intimacy all the time. But anyway, I think that a lot of people found that just having the opportunity to chat with your children more frequently or, you know, making it part of your everyday life is important. Um, we were homeschooling, uh, well, as parents were homeschooling their children and as grandparents, a lot of us were helping with that process. And it became kind of an interesting challenge, you know, to, to talk to your own children about the, the way that they are raising their kids and learning from that. The things you couldn't get from a distance. You were kind of forced to just make that effort to connect and communicate. Um, so you learned, you learned to adapt, you learned to grow and you learn to change. And I changed in lots of ways. I, I know for sure, and I maybe that's another video another time, <laughs> but, um, but I know that it's made a big, big difference in my life and the priorities that I have. Also, the way that I'm going to live when I get through this, when we all get through this, when we get to a place where we can travel, where we can um, you know, make, mix with people again, <laughs> touch people, hug them. So we, don't have, we learned how to experience our family and our home really much differently. One thing we definitely learned how to do was how to make do. You know, how to make do with what we had. If we didn't have, have yeast, we made uh, bread that didn't rise. You know, we made flat, flat uh, bread. Um, if we didn't have, you know, something um, like birthday candles, we ran out of birthday candles, my grandson's birthday. We used tea lights and we just learned to make do, you know, with whatever we had. And in doing that, I think we learned to live, with, live more with less. And I know that um, there was you know, sort of a funny joke about the fact that after the lockdown started, there were like huge bags uh, appearing outside Salvation Armies and Goodwills and charity shops because people just looked around and said, 
why do I have that in my life now? I don't need it. It was like 10 years ago that I thought it would be useful. So we found those, um, we found those places in our lives that made us happy. And our home, getting back to that, I think was the, the thing that we found was the most immediate. And we could do things to like me surrounding with flowers, simplifying with um, organization. I've got boxes now that are, I got these really cool boxes that are um, collapsible, but they, they fold up in boxes with lids. And I could see one behind me, it's kind of green and uh, black stripe. And I, and I really, um, you know, use these new eyes that I had developed <laughs> over, the, over the months to actually look for things that were going to suit and fit a new lifestyle. Um, we, you know, we, we learned, we became wiser and we changed into people that had, um, you know, just I just a different way of, of prioritizing. So what do we do? Homes. Let's talk about work, working from home and working remotely and um, how we might have had to change our, our spaces to, to adjust, adjust and adapt to that. So a lot of people um, found it themselves mandatory work at home. They had no choice. So they had to take that kitchen table or that desk in the corner and turn it into a place that was somehow separate from the rest of the of the house or the, or even in my case, like in my room to actually make a, a workspace so that you, you know, you could actually then retreat there. You could put the, close the door or put a, some kind of a boundary up. So that became a really big, um, uh, trend working from home created this desire for uh, an office space or workspace. And I think that everybody, even if you're not working now when in your 60s and 70s, you still have projects, you still have things that you love to do. And now you, you might have been able to meet at a coffee shop or go to a workshop somewhere or go to a, um, you know, to a meeting. It's not happening anymore. So I've actually got a big table that I just put in the middle of my room that I now use for my crafts. And I mean, it's a very small space, but I felt like I needed that open area to lay out my papers, lay out my uh, decoupage stuff, things, the jewelry that I make, and just um, have, a, have a separate space for that. So maybe you've done something similar to that. But I think that our home going forward is actually going to play a much bigger part in our lives and these little secret spaces that we can create whether it's with you know a wall like a um the ikea does some very cool ones that you can kind of cover and uh, just a, a folding area that you a folding wall or, or a room divider or even like a bookcase that you can put books on one side there's so many ideas there's a woman called lisa holt i don't even know um I don't know her at all, but I watch her YouTube channel and she has these great ideas from Ikea and other low, va low value, no, high value, low cost uh, furniture and how do you can create divisions like for work, work life. Um, another thing is um, creating multifunctional spaces, you know, where you can have um, one minute you can have it as a work area and then you could turn it into an entertainment area. So maybe um, in your, you know, a basement area or, or a living room where you can turn those chairs around or you can do things that just make it more flexible and more multifunctional. So another thing she talks about is the great outdoors rooms. I love this idea. And, and maybe I've actually done a little bit of that myself here is creating rooms in your house where you can bring in nature, flowers, plants, um, you know, even in the colors you choose, like green cushions or, you know, purple um, uh, florals, whatever, just things that you like moody florals. That's my favorite um, definition or description of the, of the colors that I love. Those kinds of golds and purples and teals and, you know, green, you know, that color combination. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really, um, you know, that, that outdoor room, bringing that into the world. I think most people, when they were asked about um, lockdown, what they did the most to calm themselves, most people said they went outside, they went for a walk, that nature somehow fills you up. It fills you up with energy. And uh, another room that uh, that um, we talk about is the, um, what is it this, they call it, the Zoom room. So we're all doing work from on Zoom. I mean, this is not Zoom, of course, I'm just looking into my phone and recording, but when you're doing a video on Zoom, um, okay, one thing I noticed about myself is I tend to, I tend to, to slouch, <laughs> I tend to go like this. So you've got to sort of set up. So important with Zoom um, settings is that you have, well, good light, good computer access, you know, internet access, and a, a good background, or at least the, not good in the sense that it's fancy, but that it's not cluttered. So, you know, there's some sort of rules of Zoom. <laughs> Probably many of you have been reading them, but you know, these Zoom calls can be a really um, challenging because if you've got a busy house and you've got things going on behind you, find that space that um, where your computer or your your screen is actually reflecting 
which you want people to see. I mean, the number of mistakes that people have made with Zoom calls, well, not mistakes, they're just like children coming into the scene or things going behind you or, you know, whatever, um, it happens. But Zoom rooms are becoming quite the thing. And then finally, a spa bath hideaway. And this isn't like a whole new bathroom, but it's like a room that you can turn into a hideaway, into a spa room. And for me, I just have my bathroom, but I have um, a little shelf where I put like, um, you know, face creams, uh, face like sh the sheet masks, um, little jars, things that I bought on sale sometimes and just filled them with other things. And um, it's really fun to, to go in there and know, ah, today I'm going to have a spa day and just block, block it out. Okay, from this time to that time, I'm in my most luxurious, expensive spa, and I'm going to save $200 by doing it myself. <laughs> anyway, a spa room is another room in the house that's appearing. So Zoom room, spa room, nature room, um, you know, multifunctional room, they're all part of living right now in the safety and the comfort and the joy of your own home. So tell me about your, how you're making your home your space in, in 2021. What are you doing? Painting, adding some decorative pieces, curtains, pictures. What are you doing to make your home special through this next phase in 2021? So I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Have a really nice day wherever you are. Go do something around your house to make it special and make it you and, uh, and share with us below what you're doing. Okay, take good care, everybody. We'll talk again soon. Have a wonderful day. Love you all. Bye-bye.